Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Shami. I just watched a video from you. Marang, I watched a video from you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. You nearly made me cry. <laughs> oh wow 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 thank you so much thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you oh what a, what what it you guys made my day hey john how you doing uh oof. praise god praise god you are all so welcome, so welcome. It's a new day. It's a new day and a good new day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hey, Nick, how you doing? You're welcome. Yes, John, you sure do. You sure do. Mm, I'll be in Nairobi on Tuesday, I think it is. Neddy, how are you? You're welcome. Very, very welcome. Oh, fantastic. Glory to God. It's a new day. Tao, please can you hear me? Make sure that thing is plugged, yeah? It's a new day. So are we ready? Let's get our troops and let's dive into it. Let's dive into it. It's a new day. Oh, glory to God. I want to thank you all. Oh, Yomi, thank you, thank you, thank you. You sent a video also. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Had a great, great, great day. Wow. I should be celebrating birthday every day, man. It was a really cool day. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody for the... Thanks, Nick. I booga into it. <laughs> you know, just want to thank you all for the... Thank you so much, Nedi, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to thank you all for the for the love, the the messages, the videos, the you know, I mean, my goodness. Yeah, I, I, I had a beautiful they baked a beautiful cake for me. Um it was just it was just perfect. Thank you so much. It was just a, an absolutely, absolutely perfect day. I thank you all. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> Catherine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Whoa, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What a wonderful day it has been for me. Thank you. You've all made me so happy. Give me a wonderful day. Those who are um, at the Street University lecture, I hope you enjoyed um, uh, our guest speaker, Soji. Great, great man. All right. So today we're talking about the mystery. We've kicked off now with the blessing. You know, the blessing, empowerment to prosper. And that's what God has given us. We have been empowered to prosper. Galatians 3, 
says that Christ um, has redeemed us from the empowerment to fail. That's the curse, the empowerment to fail. And um, he's redeemed us from that, and we now have the empowerment to prosper. But to prosper, there are some things you need to understand. Some things you need to understand. Hi, Thato, how are you doing? At Cheng, you're very, very welcome. Sus, you're very, very welcome. I just want to welcome you all. I want to thank you all. Oh, my God. You guys, you know, the show of love today has been out of this world, you know, from different sectors of the globe. Thank you for the love. All right. Now. Let's look at, ooh, there's just so much we got to go into, so much we have to get into today. How powerful is the blessing? Let's even start from there. How powerful is the blessing? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. And as we go into your word today, thank you. Speak, speak to us and cause us to move from where we are to where we ought to be in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Pastor Grace, how are you? Dorcas, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Dorcas. Thank for all of you, you know, the show, like I said, the show of love today. I wish my birthday was every day, man. It was just so awesome. Hallelujah. So the blessing is the empowerment to prosper. And every one of us, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. It makes rich. So the blessing is the empowerment to prosper. It is what makes you rich. Jacob and Esau were not fighting over property. They were fighting, the, the fight was for the blessing for the blessing, the empowerment to prosper. Because once they got the empowerment, it didn't matter where they went, they will prosper. Once they got that empowerment, that was what they wanted. And, you know, and I said, the very first thing that man had from God, man heard from God was, be fruitful. God blessed them and said. So we saw that the blessing was released in words. Okay? Now, I asked a question. And I said, how? And God said, I will bless him. I will empower to prosper anybody that empowers you to prosper. And anybody that empowers you or tries to make you fail will fail. Ooh, let me just say that again. Anyone who rises up against you will fall for your sake. That's what the blessing does. That's what the blessing does. Is somebody hearing me today? Let me show you something that you need to look at. When the prophecy um, concerning the birth of Jesus was relieved, okay? Ah, oh my God. The Bible says, just listen, it says in, is it Matthew? Luke chapter 2. Let's look at Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. I want you to see something that the blessing does to people like you and I. Um, Glory to God. I will please let me look for that where it says that it shall be for the falling and the rising. Was it in Luke or Matthew where that prophecy came? Let me look for that, please, Taiwo. Taiwo will get that for us. 
but the blessing anybody that empowers you to prosper automatically they will be empowered to prosper and anybody that comes against you they will fall for your sake that's just the way it works so how powerful is this blessing remember the blessing was on joseph and the whole nation of egypt and the whole world was empowered to prosper by the blessing on joseph's life can you even imagine that let me tell you something right now that you need to let this sink by the blessing on your life if you were the only one in your nation that nation should prosper let me say it again if you were the only one in your nation by reason of the blessing on your life the nation should prosper and that's why I keep singing like a broken record that once I get, look, if in a year I get, or when in a year I get 10,000 young people out of lack, out of joblessness, and empower them to empower like four people each, that means I have an army of 50,000 people. Then, those 50,000 people engage an army of four each. And that's how we're going to take it. That's how we're going to make poverty and unemployment a choice and not a sentence. That means anybody, Malepa, thank you so much. Anybody that interacts with you must be blessed. Anybody that interact with you must be blessed. I'm going to show you some things tonight. Oh boy, are you ready? I'm gonna show you some things tonight. Uh, I call it the mystery of prosperity. Go to Luke chapter eight, Luke chapter eight and verse 10. Luke chapter eight, verse 10. He said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I want you to take that personally, that to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But listen, he said, thank you, thank you, Tron, thank you. He says, but to the rest, it is given in parables so that sin they may not see and hearing they may not understand are you hearing this to you the mysteries of the kingdom have been given but to the outsider hallelujah they don't get it they can be looking at it like this and they will not understand it they may be hearing it and they will not understand it the amplified bible of luke chapter 10 chapter 8 Verse 10 says, to you it has been given to come progressively, to know, to recognize and understand more strongly and clearly the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. But for the others, they are in parables. So that, listen, though looking, they may not see. And hearing, they may not comprehend. The God's Word translation says, when they look, they don't see. When they hear, they don't understand. But he says to you, the mysteries of the kingdom have been given directly to you. Can you imagine? They are looking and they are not seeing. They are hearing. They are not understanding. Are you hearing me today? The message translation says their eyes are open but they don't see a thing. Their ears are open, but they don't hear a thing. But to you, 
the mysteries of the kingdom have been given. That's the first thing I need you to write. The mysteries of the kingdom have been given to me. You need, that's the starting point. The mysteries of the kingdom have been given to me. The mis Now, what does that mean? When you see, when you look, you will see. When you hear, you will understand. Is someone hearing me today? And let me tell you another thing. The Bible was so intelligently put together by the Holy Spirit. So intelligently. Because when we look at this Luke chapter 8 now, we are going to see nothing was put in any position in the Bible by error. Mm -mm, nothing. So, now listen to me. How many of you, and I need y'all to be honest, how many of you have felt like, ah, I understand salvation. I understand praying for the sick. But this prosperity is a mystery. <laughs> who, 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 who has been there? Who has been there? That I understand salvation. I understand praying for the sick. I understand all that. But this thing called prosperity, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> Listen, the mystery, the mystery of mysteries of the kingdom have been given. So when you embrace that the mysteries of the kingdom have been given to you, then prosperity stops being a mystery. Come on. It stops being a mystery. It was never designed to be a secret. Hi, Thuzo. It was never designed to be a secret to those who are with Christ. Never. Prosperity was never designed ooh, to be a mystery for those who are in Christ. That's why Paul said, the mysteries have been given to you. They were with Christ. Today we have it better. We are not only with him, but we are in him. I mean, Christ, many man be in Christ, and he is in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are one with him, yet prosperity is a mystery to most believers. Why? They try to rationalize it, and a lot of the rationalization comes from the world. A lot of the rationalization comes from the world. So let's now look. No, the Bible is written in context. Prosperity. Now, another thing you got to write right now for yourself. Prosperity is no more a mystery to me. It is no more a mystery to me. How will, that means looking, you will see how to work it. Hearing, you will understand how to work it. Come on now. Ooh. Are you hearing me today? It's no longer a mystery to me. Prosperity is not a mystery to me. I am at home in prosperity oh and guess what prosperity prosperity looks good on me mm. hallelujah it's no more a mystery it's no more a mystery no it's not no more a mystery because you are in the kingdom so what led jesus to now start talking about this whole thing. You know, we look at the context. So, Luke chapter 8. Let's now go to the beginning of Luke chapter 8. Let's go to the beginning. Verse 1. <laughs> it says, Now it came to pass, afterward, 
he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. So he's talking about the kingdom. And the 12, I want you to see the people that were with him. The 12 were with him. Certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Now listen, verse 3, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod steward, and Susanna, now these are wives of, you know, you what you would call maybe like a cabinet secretary today. This is Herod's cabinet, top senior guys. Okay? So, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, and Susanna. Now, what do you see? And many others who provided for him from their substance. It was in plain sight. The mystery. Then Jesus, immediately after that, goes on into talking about sowing. The sower sows the word and all that. Then he now says that the mystery, it's, it's not a mystery to you. It's happening in plain sight. He you know what? What was this mystery? It was right there before them. These people were guys who partnered with Jesus. They were providing for him. Now, so the mystery right before them was, and we've been talking about this partnership, they gave of their substance. Jesus went on to now explain in detail now, what happens to many people is that they have been given, and I was there, where I was given and I was not seeing anything happen. You know why? Because many times we were not given with, there were two things lacking, knowledge and faith. So the giving was, just, I mean, when we were small, we just go to church and say it's collection time. We used to call it collection, offertory, collection. And they just, well, they just many times you don't even know what you give. Just, is somebody hearing me today? That is the background I grew up in. So it was just a normal, so we did not attach faith to it. And we gave in ignorance. It was just the traditional thing that everybody does. It's time we had a hymn um, in the church. This is the hymn for the offertory. That's what they call it. So they sing a song and they pass the thing and just throw coins. We throw coins in. Coins. Coins. You know, it was such that who has little change for, for offering? Who has change for offering? Or for collection, who has changed? You are not a tax collector. You know? <laughs> so, that is how we started. Can anybody identify with that? It was just traditional. Or what we grew up with. And that's why some of you can testify that the time some of you at different points had asked me, how do we give? And I said, wait don't give yet let me teach on it first isn't it i told some of you that i said let me teach on it first because we don't want it to just be a traditional uh thing that we do all right the mystery of prosperity is unraveled right before our eyes. Luke chapter 10, verse 4. 
Jesus said, carry neither money or bag, uh, carry neither money bag, knapsack or sandals, greet no one along the road, but whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. It will not, if not, it will return to you. It says, remain in that house eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. So he's sending out his men. How did he expect them to be taken care of by partners where they went? Then later on, you know, he now asked, when I sent you without anything, did you lack? They said, no. He said, now, if you have, you can take. What was he saying? You can take, but now you know that your supply comes from God. Oh, did you get that? Your supply comes from God. So, what is the mystery of prosperity? God is my supply. Write that down. God is my supply. It's not, I didn't say supplier. God is my supply. When I have God and that revelation, there's nothing I will lack. Are you hearing me today? Now, then never forget this, and this is something you must never, ever, ever forget. Never, ever forget this. And nobody told me this when I was learning this. Nobody told me. Are you ready? The cycle of giving is not complete until I receive. Did you get that? The cycle of giving is not complete until you receive. Now, do you know what has happened to a lot of people? They gave religiously. Do you know the danger of giving religiously and traditionally? You even forget where you gave. Hi, Anita. Hi, Rama. Hi, Imelda. Hi, Thuzo. You, hi, Kennedy. You forget where you gave. Now, let me ask you, have you ever seen a farmer who plants and does not remember that he planted? <laughs> but many Christians have given and they do not remember they have given. So listen, if I ask you a simple question, how much have you given in the last two months? Do you know a lot of Christians may not remember that figure? Are you saying where your harvest is going? So you have planted but you've lost track of where you planted. You don't know what you have planted. How can you believe? Receive. Is somebody hearing me today? How can you believe for what you don't know, what you don't remember? The cycle of giving is not complete until you receive. So, one of the ways you now position yourself is you keep record of your giving. 
And you see, when you plant a seed, you must water it. How do you water your seed? Gratitude. Thanksgiving. And declaration, Lord, I thank you for my seed in the ground. I thank you for the 1 million here, for the 500,000 here, for the 250,000 there. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for a hundredfold on them. And you are saying it every day as many times as you can remember. Are you hearing this tonight? You don't plant a seed and forget all about it. You don't do that. In the physical, you don't. And just so you can know, just so you know, Eh? Just so you know, ah, you, you sent me some beautiful messages. Oh, God will honor you. Thank you so much. Mm? All right, look at this. Look at this. This is... This is Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Um, Noah has come out of the ark. Uh, verse 21, the Lord smelled a soothing aroma and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, will I ever again destroy every living thing as I have done? Now listen. He says, while the earth remains this is god speaking seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer day and night shall not cease so god blessed Noah and his sons and said, be fruitful. So God has come into covenant with him. But you see what God said? Just like the seasons don't change, winter and summer doesn't change, day and night, you still have day and night today. Then he said, seed time and harvest will not change. Now, hold on to that thought. And let's go to 2 Corinthians. Hold on to that thought. Second Corinthians. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Chapter. Let's look at chapter 9. Mm. So God says, seed time and harvest will never cease. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul is writing, and the Holy Spirit is now talking, and now they are talking about money. Because he says, concerning ministering to the saints, in fact, he starts from chapter 8. I remember the Bible was not written in chapter and verse. So in chapter 8, he talked in the beginning about the Macedonian churches, how they gave. He said they gave beyond their ability. These guys, he said, he says, um, moreover, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. That they were in deep lack, but they were so liberal. They were so liberal. Listen, 
For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely given, imploring us, begging us that we would receive the gift. This is money they are talking about. So in verse 7, it says, as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, all diligence, and in love for us, see that you abound in this grace. He's telling the Corinthian church. Now, later on, it's the same letter. It's the same letter in chapter 9, verse 6. So he's still talking of money. He now says, he, verse 6 of chapter 9, he who sows sparingly, will reap sparingly. So he's talking of sowing. And he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. What is he talking about? Verse 7, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. Not, says let everyone give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. All right. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm back. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hello? Can you all see me now? So, good, good. I'm back. Are we good? There was a power thing on that phase. Sorry. So listen. It says, let everyone give. So you, you look at this. He's talking about money. And he's using the expression sowing. I'm sure a lot of you have been in churches. You say, oh, come on, sow. And you just give without understanding. In Genesis, God said, while the earth remains, does the earth remain? Yes. Seed time and harvest will never cease. Just like seasons of the cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, seed time and harvest will not cease. And then it comes to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and he's talking about seed and seed time and harvest for money then let each one give as he purposes in his heart now ladies and gentlemen so <laughs> so listen to this no when you are giving that is your seed time. And it says it will never cease. So you cannot have harvest without seed time. Because God cannot lie. He's not the author of confusion. He said seed time and harvest will not cease. So if there has not been seed time, there cannot be harvest. 
And when there has been seed time, what do we do? We keep a record of the seed and we are giving thanks for the seed and speaking over that seed consistently. So that you know that praise God. And if you are giving by, if you're in Kenya and you're giving by M-Pesa, life has been made very simple for you. Because what do you do? You go to your M-Pesa, you go and you look at M-Pesa, money out. And look at what has gone towards seed. Are you hearing me today? If you don't have that, or whatever, keep a record. Keep a record. The farmer is always excited about the seed because you know the harvest will come. Because he said, seed time and harvest will not cease. He says, this is the mystery of prosperity. It's the mystery. It's in plain sight. It's in plain sight. Is somebody hearing me today? So somebody says, oh, Wale, but I have been given and I have, I can't see the effect in my life. Simple. Were you given in knowledge? Were you releasing your faith? How do I know if you are given in knowledge and releasing your faith? If I was given in knowledge, I will know it's a seed. Harvest will come. And then if I'm given in faith, I will know when I plant the seed, I have to water it. I have to water it. How? By speaking and giving thanks. Speaking and giving thanks. Now look what he now says. When you have done, I says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Somebody who is sowing his seed with joy. Now what now happens when you are a cheerful giver? And God, verse 8, is able to make all grace. Remember in the 8th chapter, he was talking about the grace on the Macedonians. And he says, See that in verse 7, see that you abound in this grace, the giving grace. He said, see you abound in it. Make sure you abound in this grace. Now, he says, when you have given, he says, you know what? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I want to read that in the Amplified Bible. I want to read that in the Amplified Bible. You are going to, do you have your, your shouting clothes on? Are you excited? Because when you see what this is in the Amplified Bible, oh boy, you're going to be excited. You are going to be excited. Just hold on. Amplified Classic. Boy, I hope somebody's getting something tonight. All right, now, verse 8. It says, King James says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, now listen, always having all sufficiency in all things. How about that? I always have all sufficiency in all things. Come on now. He says, may have an abundance for every good work. Amplified says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work 
and charitable donation. How about that? Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Wow, I got to post that up here for you too. I've got to post that up here for you. I have to post it up here for you. Come on. Look at that. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Why? Because I have done what hap what was said to do, what I was told to do before. I have sown seed. So when I sow seed, God is able to make all grace, every favor, every earthly blessing come to you in abundance so you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation, my God. That is your portion. But as a farmer, you are farming finances. You are farming prosperity. Don't forget your seed. Don't forget your seed. Hallelujah. Now look at the next verse. As it is written here, verse, verse, verse 9, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now, let me now tell you the great part of this. When your heart is ready, you say, God, I did not know. Ah, but now I don't have the kind of money I want to give. Look at verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So you know what? You can go to God tonight and say, God, you supply seed to the sower. You said what things I, whatever I ask in prayer, believing I receive, I will have it. Lord, I come to you in prayer right now. I am asking for seed to sow. That seed, that money will show up in your hand in record time. That God, I need seed to sow so I can jumpstart the process. Is somebody hearing me today? Now, in our says, verse 11, while, because you're, you're doing this, you get to see it, you are enriched in everything for all liberal, liberality, which causes thanksgiving through God. He says, for the administration, your giving, your sowing, now you understand when we say it's sowing. Your sowing of this service not only supplies the needs of saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings unto God. That your seed does not only yield fruit for you, but your seed will cause people to thank God. 
your seed will cause people to give praise to God. Is somebody hearing me tonight? That God give me seed. And if you, and that's why we've now established a partner's program. Is somebody hearing me today? Not that we desire. One of, let me show you something. I'm looking. We keep track of these things. Just one of the outlets that we give to. One of the outlets is a ministry. Just one. This year, we have given about 400,000. Just one. Eh? And there are so many. We are, this is not, this is not uh, what we are, the, the, the money we're spending on young people, money we are spending on. Mm -mm. There was a year, listen, our giving, and a lot of guys didn't know. Um, are you, you guys didn't know when we were taking you to hotels, we were feeding, you have something to eat every, every week. By the end of that year, and that was by the time just before COVID hit, we had given about 8 million shillings. How much is that? About $80,000. $80,000. Just in that program. Is somebody hearing me today? We keep track of our giving because if we don't keep track of it, we will not be able to apply, attach our faith to it. And we won't know when the return comes because the cycle of giving is never complete until you have received. I hope somebody is getting this tonight. Your financial life is changing forever. Forever. I said your financial life is changing forever. Or let me put it better, and you can write this. My financial life has changed forever. To life, my financial life has changed forever. Is there anybody here who realizes they've been doing this wrongly? Is there anybody here who realizes, oh wow, I've been doing this wrongly? But the good news is that from today, your financial life has changed forever. So we're not just tipping God like a waiter. We're not just giving money we don't need. We're not just, mm -mm. it is deliberate. It is deliberate. You calculate it. You calculate it. Are you hearing me today? So when you hear us give the testimonies we are giving, and then you realize that there is an eight million, eighty thousand dollar seed that was planted somewhere. There was also hundreds of thousands of dollars sold in different places. Let me wrap up today by going to Philippians chapter 4 and then on Sunday I'm going to give you practical demonstrations of the blessing and showing you how the cycle 
we're going to look at the life of Peter and we're going to look at how that cycle was complete. All right? We're not, we're, not, we're, we're not tipping God. You know, we go, we give. You know how you tip a waiter? And you, you've even forgotten what you give the waiter. You've forgotten. It's because it's a tip. You just tip the waiter. What did you give that waiter? Oh, keep the change. What did you give that waiter? We treat God like that. There is no seed that I will sow, that I will forget, my friend. It's not going to happen. Why? Because this is what I am using to build my finances. This is what I am doing to get out of the place of not enough. This is how we did it. So Philippians chapter 4. Now, remember where we are coming from in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9. And in chapter 8, where Paul was talking about the Macedonian church and their giving. Guess what the capital city of Macedonia was? Philippi. So, when Paul is writing to the Philippian church, he was writing to the, was the Macedonian, this is the headquarters of the Macedonian church. And Paul now said in Philippians chapter 1, I mean the whole letter is just a happy letter. He said, I thank my God, verse 3, upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine making requests for you with joy for your fellowship or partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ just at, as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Listen, you are all partakers with me of grace. Are you hearing me today? Is it? You are my partners. You have given. So you are partakers of that grace. <laughs> okay, we are back. Okay, we are back. Where was I? Philippians. So this was a happy letter to a happy church. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Still, listen to what he now said to this same church. Go to chapter 4. We always quote this and all that, but let's look at it. Look at verse 15. You Philippians know that um, in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. He said, no church, no other church did it, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again for my necessities. Then Paul says something powerful. Verse 17, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. What happens when you don't have money in a bank and you try to cash a check? It's, it, it can't happen. You can only cash a check from a bank where you have already put money. A lot of people are trying to cash spiritual checks from an account that is in the red. How do we credit our account? Every time we are sowing seed and giving, our account is being credited. And that's why if I ask you, how much do you have in your physical account? I'm sure you know. How much do you have in your spirit? You don't know. <laughs> But every time I give, my account is credited. And that now is the basis of my faith. Now, so he said, not that I seek a gift. He says, I'm good. He says, indeed, verse 18, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So who receives it? You are giving, but it's a sweet savor and aroma unto God. Now, only then did he now make this declaration over them. And my God, and because your accounts are full, because you understand knowledge, you have knowledge about giving, you have attached your faith, you are, are, are watering your seed, you are watering your seed. It says now, verse 19, we all quoted, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why? I've been farming and my account is full. <laughs> my account is full. My account is full. Did you get it today? Did you get it today? Let me tell you something. I don't want you. It was so important. All of you who had asked, oh, we want to give, we want to do this. It was so important we got to this point where I've talked about partners, I've talked about this. So now you are able to do it with revelation. You are able to do it with revelation. Realizing that when I do this, it goes up as an aroma to God, but I'm going to keep watering my seed with my words and my thanksgiving. Oh, I want to close and I'm going to close, but I need to show you one. Do you have time for one more? Eh? I just need to show you one more. Oh boy. And I'm going to even, I think I'll kick off from here 
on Sunday. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. <laughs> Do you have on your shouting clothes? When I talk of watering your, 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 your seed. Isaiah 60, 11. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. So keep your gate open. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. Ha! I said, you mean there's something I can do that will cause men to bring to me the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings, their decision makers? will be eating from off my palms like this. You mean there's something I can do? Hey! So, he said, your gates shall be open. So, I now began to say, how do I open my gate? It's not this gate out here. How do I open my gate? Because if I can know how to open my gates, if I can know how to do that, then the wealth will come. Remember, the wealth will come because I have planted seed. My account is full. But if I know what to do, how to open my gates. Okay. So, just you don't have to go far. Verse 18 of the same Isaiah 60. You know, I tell you, I never come to share my opinion. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Verse 18. See, we are trying to figure out how to open our gates. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, neither will sin or destruction within your borders. But you shall call your walls salvation and your gates what? Praise. So, if he says, <laughs> your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. And further down, a few chapters, it says, your gate equal praise. So just take the word praise and replace gates. Praise for gates in verse 11. Therefore, your praise shall be open continually. Don't stop praising there that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in possession. I welcome you to your wealthy place. I want you to write, I have come into my wealthy place. Woo! I have come into my wealthy place. 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 Hallelujah. Now you know how to do it. <sighs> Financial, let me ask you a question. Gosh, okay, I think it's a birthday anointing. Eh? Let me ask you a question. And I think this will be the end. But you know, Paul was writing a letter and he said, finally, my brethren, and he went on to write a few more chapters. But listen, it's, it, this is birthday vibes. <laughs> I've come into my wealthy place. Now, oof, are, you ready for, are you ready for this? Once I give you this one, I will let you just go and meditate. 
and maybe you need to come back after about an hour or two or in the middle of the night and come and watch this whole message again because what i'm going to share with you where i started from genesis 8 22 while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat ah! winter and summer day and night shall not cease now let me ask you a question are you ready when it is day do you have to pray for night to come do you have to pray for night to come no when it is night do you need to pray for day to come no why is that so because god has said it it shall not cease you all know winter is coming you don't have to pray for winter to come but you also know summer comes so you don't have to pray for summer to come you don't have to pray for winter to come you don't have to pray for the seasons guess what you don't have to pray for harvest if you plant the seed it is a natural as naturally as day will follow night night will follow day if you will plant the seed you don't have to pray about money ever again in your life. You don't have to pray about money ever again in your life. Plant the seed. Water the seed. Thank God for the seed. If you need backup, dispatch your angels to bring the harvest to you and we have the confidence because we have seed in the ground Whew. all right did you get it i hope it wasn't too heavy for you tonight i hope it wasn't too heavy a meal did you get it? So, and let me tell you, you can start right now. What are we focused on? We have a couple of things we are focused on. We have babies, we have children to adopt. We are one of the orphanages we support we've been supporting them but now we've realized we can adopt a court so that means these children in those courts are literally ours but they are there <laughs> so we're adopting them and that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be looking after them till their adulthood we want to do as many of that then we have young people we need to get out of poverty. That's major. We need to get people out of poverty. How do we do that? We can invest in them. We can, you know, empower them, enroll them in our classes and empower them. We have that. We have our September program coming. So you have many channels that you can sow into. Every time you hear there's an opportunity, a place to sow, see it as an opportunity for you. To do what? Seed time and harvest. All right? That is what we do. We are not telling you to do what we have. This is what we have done. I was talking earlier on at Street University that we sold, I sold books at Uhuru Park. I was living in YMCA, other people's books. Today, people are selling my books. 
today, this same person, through what I have taught you today, through what I have taught you today, I've given away over 14 or 15 cars. Through what I have taught you today, I have given away houses where you walk out and you invite somebody and say, you know what, this is your house from today. We have done that. This is what we do. And like Paul, we don't, not that we desire a gift, but we desire that fruit might abound to your account. So when all these breakthroughs are happening, you can say, I am a partaker of that. So if you would like us to send you our partnership details, how you can get involved, please, by all means, send me an email, wale at the streetuniversity.com. Some of you already have it. You already have the account details and all that. Get involved. Don't be a spectator. Get involved. All right? Get involved. Let's transform this nation. Okay? All right. Wow. Today has been something. Tywo, you want to say anything? My wife has the most beautiful smile. <laughs> okay guys so send me an email we'll send you the partnership package and once again i want to thank all of you for making my birthday special you know and my desire for my birthday is that we just are able to empower and lift more people out all right so thank you so very much god bless you you are blessed already amen don't forget you don't have to pray about winter and summer. You don't have to pray about night and day. If you have seed in the ground, you will never have to pray about money again. It's part of the same covenant. Thank you. And whatever you do, keep winning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.